Welcome to Dirt Gear TV and welcome to part five. Part five? Part six? Fifteen? Welcome to Dirt Gear TV and welcome to whatever part this is. I had to take a little time off because of the hurricane. I've been also waiting for something to arrive in the mail, which I'm really excited about. And I think you guys will be excited about it as well. At least I hope you will. So I got this magical little package here. So you guys should probably have figured out or known by now that I'm working on the electrical portion of the buggy. I ran into some dead ends that just completely prevented me from moving forward with the electrical. The main reason why I couldn't move forward with that stock wiring harness and the stock ECU was because of the anti-theft RF keys that these new car engines use. So the only way that I would have been able to get that system to function would have been if I could have found somebody to flash my ECU. Because this is a Mitsubishi Mirage, it's not a Lancer, it's not an Evo, nothing fun or special about it. Nobody has the equipment. So the stock computer system is out, which brings me to what I've been waiting for in the mail now for some time. So what we have here, is called a mega squirt system. Mega squirt. Oh, this is nothing inappropriate. I want to see no comments down below about your dirty mind, okay? This is serious stuff. It's an all-in-one fuel management and also ignition system that you can run basically any kind of project. Single cylinder engines, you can put them on hot rods. It really doesn't matter. It's a really versatile system that you can use on so many different types of ignition and fuel systems but it's an all-in-one system. So what's so cool about the Mega Squirt systems Mega Squirt. is that you can purchase these systems as a complete ready-to-go box and they have different levels depending on what type of application and how many different accessories you have. But one of the reasons why these systems are so popular is for people like me who are building small projects, you can actually get a, a, an unassembled Mega Squirt system and you actually build it yourself. And the cost by doing it that way is a huge savings. So this is what they call the MS3, uh, and this is gonna be an MS3 expansion. Because that Mirage engine has the VVT, uh, which is the variable valve timing controller, that needs to be operated by the ECU. So this is a Mega Squirt 3 system. Mega Squirt. With the expansion card. So they call it like the MS3X is what it is because I opted to build this, number one, I'm saving a ton of money by doing it that way. Also, I think it's a really cool project. So I went with the MS3, 449 for a complete system. If you have a VVT, you're gonna need the expansion card, which I think is another $100. And so the whole thing put together is basically, it's about $500, maybe $600 complete, all said and done, in and out the door. So the goal for today is to put together this entire Mega Squirt system in one video for you guys, and that way it'll be ready for testing and installation on the next video installation. So things that you'll need to build your Mega Squirt system should you choose to go that route, save yourself a good chunk of change. Most importantly, soldering iron. Now for those of you thinking, Rick, I don't know how to solder. Well, for crying out loud, get a life skill. Now for those of you thinking, well, Rick, I don't have a good soldering iron. I don't either. Look at this thing. So don't be afraid to use a crummy soldering iron. Now, if I can put an MS3 together by myself with this $5 Walmart special, you can do it with your soldering iron from Amazon. Not a big deal. Now, what you're also gonna need, you're gonna need some solder. Again, this solder's been through it. This stuff's been with me for about five years. I've got welding splatter all over it. It's melted right down. This is a 6040 and that's gonna be good for electrical. I recommend when doing these fine electrical jobs that you get the finest wire you possibly can. The other thing you're gonna need, you're going to need to print out a manual for your MS3 system. Now the kind folks over at DIY Autotune were kind enough to send me everything that I needed to know, answer a lot of questions that I had. Really, they've been phenomenal. They primarily do the customer service for these products through email, and I will tell you they're very knowledgeable and they're very responsive. So check them out, it's DIYAutotune.com. If you wanna print out the assembly instructions for your MS3, it begins on page 217, and this is a 240 page manual. So let's take a look what we got here in the box. We've got this little piece here, which is microchip thingy here in the box. We've got all of our little bits and resistors and I don't even know what they are, capacitors, resistors, 
transistors, transgenders. We've got a bunch of these things, little chippy deals. We've got our main board. We've got our case under here. More little gizmos that are gonna get welded into place. We've got our connector ends, and we've got more little wiry doodads. All right, so that's everything in the box. Okay, so step one, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you've got all of your fiddly bits and put them aside so you've got everything laid out properly. Use extreme caution when accessing the parts. Two hours later. Okay, here is our main board. I'm just gonna set that one aside. The first step is to solder in our connectors. This is a flux solder, and we're just going to put together all of these little connections. The key with this is patience and steady hands. I have neither. what our board close-up looks like. I'm not sure if you guys can read those, but they are actually all lettered and numbered. Basically, we're painting by numbers here. It has all the little numbers of which resistors this is. This bag has a different value, but it's got all of the resistors grouped together for that specific value. Next step is to work on our diodes, and we're gonna solder those into place. The thing about diodes that's different from resistors is they are directional. And they're very good about giving you instructions about which direction. There's a strip on these diodes. See that little silver strip there? So these are directional, and they're gonna to have to go in, and it, then there's a little direction with a stripe that's marked on our board here. So we're gonna to wanna to keep those in that same direction. Okay, so now we're moving on to our capacitors. Now it's really important that you check the capacitors for proper functionality prior to installation. They are polarized, so there's gonna be a positive and negative side. And really the simplest way that you can check to make sure that the capacitor is uh, functioning properly is you just take it and you just touch it to your tongue. So that's step one. And then step two, make sure you have the uh, positive arrow in the square side of the peg. On to the metal heat sink. This is when things start to get a little tricky. We're going to start with U5. We're also provided some thermal grease here, which we're going to need in this step.
now we're at the testing phase. We've got our card put together. This is what it should look like finished. Now you have the option to build your own wiring harness. They do give you the male end here if you'd like to just build your own wiring harness, which I may do. And then we've got the back with some of our jumpers. This is the map sensor. Now that our main card is built, there's a couple things they have you do in order to test it. Um, as you can see, I've just hooked up some power to um, pin 28 and then I've grounded one of my other pins. And I've just got a little bike battery here that I've been testing with. Basically, you take readings across this uh, 40 pin connector here for five volts. If you have any more than five volts, you did something wrong in the process, don't move on because you'll cook the, the processor. Basically what I'm doing here, I've got 12 volt power coming into it, and we just wanna test a few of these circuits to make sure that they're reading at five volts, which they all are. So, that means I assembled it correctly. Okay, now that we've got our processor installed, this is the finished product. This is what it should look like. Now we can do a little bit more testing. So at this point, if you've got power running to it and any of your power transistors or your ECU is hot to the touch, there's a mistake that's made somewhere and you're gonna have to start over or at least track that mistake. In my case, I don't feel any temperature on any of these transistors or the ECU. So we should be good to go with this. That's the complete build of our Megasquirt 3 system. I'm not gonna get into the wiring harness build and the expansion in this part of the video because for some of you, you may only be interested in the Megasquirt system and not necessarily how that system is going to apply to our dune buggy. For those of you that are following the dune buggy build, then certainly we'll get into more of how this uh, Megasquirt system will tie into the rest of that build for the dune buggy and how that works with the engine and all the wiring components, the expansion and so forth. So I probably took me about six to eight hours to put this together if I had just done it in one sitting. Really cool system, I'm really happy with it so far. So I'm hoping that this system will work as well as I think it's going to. And I'm really looking forward to wiring this thing up and seeing how I can tune this engine with this uh, MS3 system. So that'll wrap up this part of our dune buggy build. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the other parts of this dune buggy build. It's certainly one of a kind and we're going to be taking it out on the trails here pretty soon. I would say we're at least 50% done with the project, if not more. And at this point, it's really just a matter of building the wiring harness and then test running the engine and putting together these systems. So that's going to move pretty quickly. We're getting close to the end. I'm excited. You should be excited too. Also, if you want to kind of get like a sneak peek of behind the scenes about what we're doing earlier on than when these videos go up to YouTube, you can check us out on Instagram at Dirt Gear TV. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next part. So for the purposes of building this, what you're going to want to do is just take your capacitor, you just give it a quick lick, and that'll tell you if it's working or not.